Now for the legal perspective on this political trial, we turn to South Texas College of Law professor Josh Blackman. What's unique about this process is that the Senate of the Texas legislature functions as a court, and each individual senator serves as a jury member of the court. <clears throat> and the lieutenant governor, uh, Dan Patrick, who is the president of the Senate, basically serves as the judge, the presiding officer of the trial. So it's this weird thing where people who are usually politicians are thrust into this judicial role. Uh, so we've seen that uh, uh, Lieutenant General Patrick has issued out a gag order to block uh, uh, Paxson and his lawyers from talking about the case. And he did this uh, shortly before Busby announced a press conference where he wanted to talk about how corrupt and awful the entire process is. Um, so we're seeing already that the presiding officer is exercising his power uh, in a way that I'm sure the Paxson people are not very happy about. When people watch this unfold, will it look familiar to them? like a regular case, or will it be unique in the way that it's structured? Well, it will look like a trial in the sense that the prosecution, that is the House managers, go first. They present their case. Any witnesses can be cross-examined by Paxson's lawyers. After that point, Paxson puts on his defense, and his lawyers, I'm sorry, and his witnesses can be cross-examined by, uh, by the House managers. And then at some point, there'll be deliberation which will be a closed session, and the people and the public won't be there. The cameras will be turned off, and the jurors, the senators, can talk amongst themselves and deliberate. So in many regards, it looks like a usual um, trial, a, a usual trial, but it'll be anything but. Because rather than having you know a neutral group of 12 citizens who have no interest in the case, you have the senators of Texas who have a very strong political interest in this case. Indeed, one of the jurors is Paxson's wife. Uh, she can't vote. Uh, but she still will be present during the proceedings, which would be kind of awkward. Really remarkable to watch this unfold in Texas, where it is controlled in both houses and the governor's office by Republicans impeaching a Republican. That is markedly different than what we've seen in the past, where Republicans essentially were responsible for the impeachment of Bill Clinton and Democrats were responsible for the impeachment of Donald Trump. You know, this is something of a civil war among Texas Republicans. Um, you have the camp that favors Paxson. You have the camp that favors removing him, that he's no longer good for the party. Uh, it's very rare that a party sort of eats itself, but that's what we're seeing with the Texas Republican Party. Uh, I, I can predict with some certainty that no matter what happens here, the Texas Republican Party, Texas Republican party will be bruised. Uh, if Paxson's acquitted, uh, he'll be there, and there'll be re recriminations. And if he's convicted, uh, there'll be retaliation. There'll be challenges in the primaries. Uh, Pax may run for federal office, uh, uh, Senate, for example. So there are a lot of things that might happen ahead of us. Anything else you think is important for people to know as we get closer to the day when this impeachment will actually begin? I think we won't know very much until the actual vote. Uh, that managers, their case is pretty open and shut. They know what they're going to say. Uh, Paxson's arguments have already been made in the press. So it will come down to how many senators vote to convict. And if they have the requisite two thirds, then Paxson will be permanently out of the position and disqualified from future state office. Good. Josh Blackman with the South Texas College of Law. Thanks for your perspective. Thank you.